Hello YouTube, in this new video about the Natty or Not website, I am going to approach an article they made about forearms with the uh, very interesting title of Why You Will Never Have Freaky Thick Forearms, Stop Dreaming Now, which as you can tell is pure demoralization, just like the rest of the website is actually, it's an endless stream of articles to tell people that they'll never get big. I just don't understand why I even have a website like this. I understand that many people actually relate and resonate to that type of loser's mindset and therefore he must make money out of it for some reason. But it's actually great for me and this channel because it's an endless stream of stupid articles that I get to debunk. So today we're going to talk about this because if you know me, you know that I believe that human potential is almost infinite and therefore every muscle you want to grow will grow. It's just a matter of training it. So let's see what his arguments are for his hypothesis and his theory, because he says that apparently you can never have freaky thick forearms, right? I guess it's going to be based on genetics. I actually didn't read the article. Uh, I'm shooting from the hips here. Uh, I just want to basically react to it as I read and just logically destroy his arguments. So he says, Still dreaming of those thick and meaty forearms that the Hollywood projectors showed you? You can stop now, or not, if you want to remain on the losing side. So, first sentence, I already have an issue. Why would dreaming be on, would place you on the losing side? Dreaming is always good. Having high hopes is always good. Between someone who dreams and someone who has lost all hope, even if the person who's lost his hope has the, the, the truth and is in the right, he's still the loser because he's the one with the loser's mindset. It, understanding that the wood might be a bad place doesn't make you a better person, it doesn't make you smarter. It makes you someone who now has to completely have their life revolve around that, that mentality of everything is terrible. And in lifting, this is going to lead you to make no progress, because you have to believe in it. If you don't believe in it, you won't walk up. And he says, I'm here to tell you that your dreams is a, is a waste of time in 99.9% .9 of the time. So for him, 99.9% .9 of people will never have, be, never have big forms. What is the most popular recipe for achieving forms? Wrist rolling, wrist curls, deadlifts. Well, first off, people who think they're going to get deadlift, uh, big forms out of deadlifts are mistaken. It's a static hold. It helps, but it's mostly grip. There is an isometric stretch in that for the forearms, but it's it's not the best way to grow your forearms at all. He says those are good, they'll give you a pump, but they will not make your forearm grow any more than playing World of Warcraft, okay? So apparently, destroying muscle fibers does not make the muscle grow. First time I heard of that. And he says the reason why is short muscle bellies. Short muscle bellies is what you see on DL, which is what I call a D-Y-E-L, a do we even lift individual. And he says, such as myself. So at least he's self-aware that he's a little wimp, which should disqualify him from giving advice, by the way. I don't understand why anyone would read an article where the guy opens by saying, I'm black-pilled, I believe nothing in this world is magical and that you cannot accomplish anything. Here's me giving you advice about life. You should click out of this website immediately. Don't let that type of energy in your life. Or if you do, just watch my videos making fun of it. So he talks about the short muscle bellies. He says they are often located on the forearms and calves, which is not true. Again, not true. It's, there are differences in size between muscle bellies across the body. But saying that they are located on the forearms and calves, I mean, no. The real delt is a, is a smaller muscle belly than the calf and the, and the forearms. It, it's a difference because of the bone that it's attached on, the function of the muscle, etc., etc., it's just that those are the two areas of the body that people really struggle to grow because they don't know how to train them. And therefore, they try to concoct in their brains reason why, and they try to be scientific. So they say, oh, it's the short muscle bellies. But a muscle belly can be as short as you want. If the segment it's on is not super long, it changes nothing. And we'll see later that even if it is on a short segment, it can actually be a good thing. So he says, located on the forms and calves, and result in impossible growth since there is nothing to grow apart from a few centimeters of meat. Uh, regardless of how long the muscle attachment is, it can grow. There is no difference. 
there is more potential for growth. So for example, let's say you have muscle from here to here. As it grows, it's not just this portion that's going to grow, it's the entire portion. So you get more overall development. But even if the portion was here, growth could, would still occur. It just occurs on a smaller portion. It doesn't mean that it cannot grow. And again, I'm sort of spoiling here, but when you have shorter muscle bellies, they pop more. They appear more freaky. Now, do they look denser? Do they look uh, more massive? Maybe. Some people would say maybe. Short biceps, when you actually flex them, you have a better peak. It's a, it's a different visual in a sense. Big farms are like big calves, sex and money. Those who have them in abundance do nothing to acquire them. Apparently, people who have money just got money. I mean, it might be true for a few percentage of people, but I personally live in a country where people work for their money, and the biggest and hardest workers I know have the most money. Surprise, correlations. And same for sex. I don't know why your pursuit in life would be sex and why would you think that this is a value and something that you can count. Like, oh, I've had 15 sexes today. I'm such a chad. Great. You can clearly see the priorities of this guy, by the way. And you also understand why he's so black peeled is because people who have that narrow view of the world tend to be extremely sad. It's a sad life to live. He says it all comes naturally like the sun in the morning. So this is typical of people who have sucky lives and who have never accomplished anything and who think, okay, I can either face and take responsibilities or I can pretend I was born this way. Because in reality, if you say this guy was born good, then you can say I was born bad. And therefore, it's not your fault. Well, that, take it out of your head. It's pathetic. Never think like this. The men with the nastiest forearms do not train them harder than you. Their secret is proper genetics, aka long muscle bellies. This isn't a joke. I'm glad that he precises afterwards this isn't a joke. Because the entire, I didn't train my forearms and they grew thing, came from PED users. And guess why they don't have to train their forearms? Because they get diffuse tonnage from the PED use. So all of the guys like Ronnie Coleman, etc., who had massive forearms, who didn't train them, yeah, guess why? They were on grams and grams of stuff. It doesn't apply to naturals. The only naturals with big forearms are people who train them. And maybe they don't train them in a conventional way. Maybe they, they work as a welder. The biggest forearms I've ever seen in my life were on people who weld. Now, question. Do all people who weld, do all welders have long, uh, long uh, attachment in their, the muscle, muscles of their forearms? The answer is no. Statistically, it's not possible. And yet, they all have big forearms. So what is the other factor that connects these individuals? The work they do. And what is that work? They grip stuff, they hit stuff all of the time with wrist flexions. So what grows your forearms? Training. Here, I just debunked the article, but I'm going to continue. The poster boys for forearms do nothing specifically to build those forearms. They just exist, eat, and sometimes inject. That's it. Mystery solved. That's not true again. Because in reality, and I'm going to just blow your mind here, if the muscle attachment you have is longer, yes, you have more potential for development, but guess what? The muscle looks smaller in its base state. If you've never trained it, the long attachment does nothing for you. It makes you look like a stick. People with, who have really long calf attachments makes the calves look fuller, yes, but it doesn't make it pop. And what is important in bodybuilding? It's 3D. It's the pop. And so you hear people complain about, oh, I have short calves, etc. But it's because between a guy who has short calves uh, attachments and long calf attachments, if they both don't train it, of course, the guy with the longest attachment might have more potential for growth here. And maybe he'll grow faster. But I can tell you that he won't look impressive just in his base state. It's not possible. You have to train it. Then he quotes, Alpha Destiny showed me some underground arm wrestling exercises. I will get huge. He really has a hate boner for Alpha Destiny. Maybe because Alex, regardless of what you might think about him, actually gave some hope to some people to actually get big as naturals. And he, he answers that quote by saying, be my guest. If you don't have long muscle bellies, your forearms will be lacking forever. You want to know why? But uh, because tendons do not grow. Which is not true, they do grow, but less than muscles. And you don't really, you won't get any visual uh, pop from it. So he's sort of right. 
And when you have long tendons, the bones remain naked, case closed. So here it's an interesting discussion because he's not incorrect. You especially see that with triceps, actually. There is a large portion, actually, I don't know if I can show you, but if I can show you the arm, there's a large portion here. You won't see it because of the light. But here, what I'm touching here, this is bone. There's almost no muscle here. And this means that, yes, nothing is going to grow there. If you get fat, you'll get fat there, but muscle won't grow because there's no muscle. But guess what? This is what creates the horseshoe. When you flex your tricep and you're pumped and you have the, the heads that create that horseshoe, it's only possible and made possible because you have that hole in the middle. The people who have the best horseshoe have that hole placed at the right position, but they don't necessarily have the smallest. And that is across the board the same for all of the muscles in the, in the, in the human body, in the male body. And I just want to bounce back on the Alpha Destiny thing because what Alpha Destiny says is his argument for growing forearms was arm wrestlers have gigantic forearms. A lot of them have similar lower arm uh, measurements as upper arms. Sometimes they have 17 inches and 17 inches. And therefore, arm wrestling makes your arm grow. He wasn't wrong because logically it makes total sense. Same argument as with the welder thing. Why do all arm wrestlers have big forearms? Because they do a ton of wrist flexion. So the work grows the forearms. Or the only counter argument to that would be saying, oh, the only people who go into arm wrestling are people who are gifted genetically for forearms. But that's not true. Many people enter sports that they're bad at just because they love it. And it's the same for arm wrestling. So in quoting Alpha Destiny, he destroyed his own argument. But he's correct with the tendon. You can't grow tendon, but that's not a problem. What if I just inject bro, which you should never do, by the way. Because if you're a small dweeb like this guy before test, you'll be a, a slightly bigger dweeb after test. What needs to change is this, is your mindset. It's your ability to work and just shut your pie hole and get it done. So he says, you're starting to make sense. One problem remains, however, injections do not change your genetics, they amplify them. He's correct. If you have lacking forms as a natural, they remain poor even when you become a natural. That's incorrect. There are many professional bodybuilders who train like a fat kid eats cake, and yet their forearms and calves are still resembling a table's leg. The reason why is because they don't train it. Uh, diffuse tonnage can only get you so far. Taking PEDs, especially in large amounts, will make the entire body grow. All of the muscles will grow to an extent, meaning that certain portions with a lot of androgen receptors will blow up. The part of the body where you're gifted will blow up, and the parts where you work will blow up. But the, but the ones you ignore, they won't change. And this is a little bit of a discussion that some people can counter easily, and I'll counter it myself. But if you look at Arnold, he had garbage calves. He, he came back after two years of working calves every day. He had good calves. Now, some people say that he actually cheated and he got, you know, he, he got them surgically implanted. They were fake. That's possible. I'm not saying that. But I've seen on myself that I've trained my calves for now eight months, seriously, and they're growing. It's not that they can't grow, it's that no one trains them because it's the most boring body part to, throw, to grow. It's super annoying to train, it's not fun. But he's right in the sense that you will amplify certain genetic traits you have as you do steroids because they make things that were already predisposed to be big even bigger. But if you had small calves that because you never grew them, never woke them, then you jump on train and you still don't woke them, guess what? They're not going to grow. But bro, I started farm specialization two weeks ago. I'm seeing nice growth. Again, that's me quoting him, quoting someone else. He really likes Strowman arguments, maybe because it's the only way for him to argue against someone in his life, to make up an hallucination in his brain. It's, he says it's called a pump. You are toning your forearms, muscles, toning. When you see that word, just close the website. There's no such thing as toning a muscle. It grows or it doesn't. It's like, it makes me think of these women who want to be toned and not muscular. Well, that's not possible. You become toned because your muscle mass increases and your, your fat mass decreases. You are toning your forearms muscles by keeping residual tension in them through, through frequent exercise. What, if, what even that even means? Is he talking about a pump? But a pump is not permanent. I, don't, I think I understand what he's getting at, but he's trying to sound smart about it. It's annoying. 
And he says it's not actual growth, but a state of preparedness. I think that might be the most bro sciencey thing I have ever read from that guy. I would love to see an article about that very concept because it's interesting. He says, you are appreciating fibers that were there before. Let me tell you a story. Oh, that's going to be great. A story about a guy who looks like he doesn't lift. After my Puma booking years, I cut and decided to do a bodybuilding high rep routine. Okay, which in my opinion means he did only volume and no intensity, which you won't grow from that. After six to eight months, I looked at my legs and said, do squads have grown? I even took pictures, okay? Quads, by the way, the easiest body part to grow. If you can't grow your quads, there's a problem. You don't know how to train because they should grow like weeds. Weeds, sorry. I've been calling him a weeb so much that now it's ingrained in my brains. Eventually, I found myself in a downtime period. I stopped training for at least six months. I guess I was finally getting smart. Training should be the backbone of your life. I, I, if you're on this channel, training should be so important to you that between having all of your nails removed and stopping to train, you should, you should sacrifice your nails because it's going to be less painful in the long term. This is also why I can't believe people took advice from him. He doesn't even like training. If you don't like training, you will never get big. One day, I went to a swimming pool in your work and took photos in the locker room like a total narcissistic jerk, okay? Apparently, appreciating your body is being narcissistic, in which case you should be narcissistic. I couldn't find a difference in my quads despite not training them for half a year. Yet, I am sure that if I was to begin a specialization routine, I would be seeing mutation after a few days. Sadly, the transformation would be happening only in my mind. Okay. I could make a full video about this little life story that he told. What happened here was, first off, he says here, I would have seen change after a few days. You cannot see change after a few days. And actually, the brain is not even capable of doing so. Meaning that when you start transforming your body and getting muscle, it's been proven that people start catching up and they start noticing differences after six months. You start noticing differences after eight to 12 months. But if you actually took measurements after the fourth month period, you would see that you got bigger. And yet your brain can't register it. That I can't explain why, but it's, it's, it's factual. So it shows that he has a weird relationship with his body to start with. Plus, I will say that the only reliable way to know if you've grown or not is not the mirror. The mirror is nice because it tells you that you look great, but it's measurements. That's the reason why when I grow my body parts, I measure every single time because that's objective. It grew. Unless I, I've, I got super fat, it would be muscle. It's muscle gains. He didn't do that. He did that visually. So his entire experiment has absolutely no bearing. Plus, most likely what happened to him was he stopped training. He got fat. Guess where the fat goes in some men? The legs. So the measurements of his legs didn't actually change because they got fatter. And since for the most part, naturals are not going to have strided legs and crazy legs, a little bit of fat difference doesn't make enough that you actually can tell, wow, I got fat. So yeah, that's the story of a guy who apparently wasted his time doing a bodybuilding routine for high reps for eight months, then stopped training because he's all weeny and noticed no difference. Well, when you, if you start and you don't have muscles and you look like you've never lifted and you stop lifting, yeah, you're not going to look much different. And he continues... But what about Albert Beckles? He has super short insertions and had thick forms. So see, this is so interesting. I like bodybuilding. I don't even know who that Albert guy is. He knows. So that's a guy who doesn't train, apparently thinks that you cannot get bigger as a natural, but has an obsession with pro bodybuilding. His mind has been matrixed. He's lost, sadly. I think he's lost, but the people who follow him and are lost can still be saved. And he said... Have you heard the expression, ex exceptions prove the rule? So what he's doing is typical. He's creating an argument that is faulty by default, and he's preemptively trying to counter the arguments that are going to debunk it, which let's see if he actually debunks it. Beckles had developed forearms, but they were still lacking. His forearms above describe perfectly what I mean by naked wrist, okay, which I agree. The sad truth is that short muscle bellies have always sucked for bodybuilding, which is sometimes true, sometimes not true. The megaphones will try to flip things with consultation tactics. Shoulder biceps make it easier to build a nice peak. But honestly, that's just one of the many stupid ways people like themselves. So he didn't actually counter anything. He just said, oh, that's stupid. 
I've known people who had massive measurements for their arms, long attachments. Their biceps look, at, look like potatoes. They look terrible because they're too long. It's thinking that if all of your muscles were super long, you would be better off is it's crazy talk. You need balance. And surprise, surprise, most people have balanced bellies in their body. You have long ones, you have short ones. For me, for example, I have short attachments in my quads. I think my quads look pretty good. I have medium attachments in my biceps. I think my biceps are some of my best body parts. I have, where do I have short attachments? I have short attachments for my forearms. I have all of that that is naked wrists. Okay? I think my forearms are not terrible, especially when I flex them like this. When I do a, 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 a bicep pose, I guess. They are weak from the, the front like this. But that's a different discussion. I will eventually make an update on the forearm training. So all of that, again, is a way for him to say, oh, if you don't, like, if you don't have long forearms, you're screwed. Short muscle bellies never help when your goal is to, is to body build, which is not true again. And he says there are no exceptions, which I proved wrong. And then he shows a picture of a guy who doesn't necessarily have long attachment for his uh, forearms. He just has a pump. What about wrist size? And here we're getting into the interesting part. He said, sad news again. Are you familiar with the saying, when it rains, it pours? It translates to this. If you get slapped, you will probably get punched, blah, blah, blah. He likes his metaphors. Wrist thickness influences form size. As I told you in the book, potential, because yes, this idiot writes book that people buy and read and not use for fire. Thicker bones equal bigger muscles by default. That's not true. Thicker bones mean that the muscle is going to be pushed further out, appearing it bigger. But there is no direct correlation to that, meaning that if you look at a guy who's massively thick framed and you look at his legs that look like tree trunks, the bone is bigger. So the muscle around it expands more. It's not necessarily that the muscle is bigger. There is some truth to it in the sense that as you develop the musculature, a bigger structure is going to make it easier to handle all of that muscle mass. Someone like me, for example, a framelet, I was too fully at some point, I couldn't carry that weight. It was too heavy for me, I have a small frame. But that's not what he's saying here. He says, most men with short muscle bellies have thinner wrists. That's not true. Again, this has never been proven. This is a dual strike against the dream for massive forearms. As they say, the poor get poor, the rich get richer. And that's the end of his, uh, of his argument, which I shouldn't call an argument because there is no argument in it. It's just an endless stream of a guy who couldn't manage to achieve anything because he's lazy and therefore is trying to get you to be as miserable as he is. So let me finish by telling you a little story about a guy who has small wrist. That guy had small wrist his entire life. Uh, they measure at around six inches, around between six and 6.5. That guy, when he started training, didn't know anything about wrist size. And therefore, he started actually doing curls. He started doing wrist, uh, wrist flexion, etc. Because he was never poisoned. His mind was never damaged with the idea that he would never get big. Because he didn't care about wrist, wrist measurement. He didn't even know what his wrist measurement was. He just knew he had small wrist and he didn't care. And that guy trained and trained and trained year in, year out. He did his curls. And that guy eventually reached a point where his arms, his upper arms, would be 18 inches pumped. That guy is me. Look at my wrist. I have baby wrists. Look at my hands. I have very small hands. Look at the comparison between the two. If I get it close to you, look at this thin, dainty bone. I still manage to build big arms with it. The forearms are also catching up. If you check some of uh, the posting videos I make when I'm pumped, I, the, for me, the inside of the forearm here has always been the strong point, and the outside, as I said, has always been the weak point. But I'm actually catching up in this area too. And so I want to end the video on that and to give you a message of hope. You can still grow your forearms and have impressive arms if you have small wrists, if you have short insertions. It just means that you might get a, a different visual representation. You might have some difficulties, but you can navigate around it. What will happen to you, guaranteed if you stop training, is they will remain small. And that's the only way you will stop progressing is if you believe and you buy into that black pill nonsense and you stop, just like that guy stopped, once you stop moving forward, the evolution stops with it. That makes total sense. So put that aside, put your head down, focus on programming, focus on proper workout, 
and do arm days, do isolation movements. And I guarantee you with patience, because it's, those are still small muscle groups, they take time to grow, but with patience, they will. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.